Okay, so we've got our chisels all designed, and now what we want to do is make a chisel array. So if we were to print these, we'd have physical models to look at. So the first thing we're going to do is comment out our picture and make sure that that's working. And we'll type our chisel array as a new module. And uh, the interesting part for this is we don't really have to do any thinking, right? We just take our chisels and we're going to have to move them. Some amount. Um, and in some axes, we don't really know, but we're just going to pick one and go with it. And I'm just going to move it spacing. And uh, we're just going to put a number. So I believe we have five chisels, so we'll move this by spacing, and this will be the number that we pass with the G. So at this point, we can cause uh, we can pass chisel array and make sure that it's functioning the way we thought. Um, I think the chisels are all 15 millimeters, so. If we space them 20 millimeters apart, it shouldn't be an issue. And one more module. Ah, don't forget to write module in front of your modules, otherwise it doesn't know what you're trying to do. And then again, always check your typing. Okay, so theoretically there's a chisel floating around over there. And um, if I like this orientation, that's great. We can just use that. So now what I'm going to do is just go and take each piece of code that I've got. And so you could design this parametrically. So you could print up a whole array of chisels and they would all pass the same information as you go. But um, in all honesty, there's only so much you need uh, for the next demo. So now we grab the inverted ball. And it looks like we didn't catch the semicolon. <laughs> There's our inverted cone. And there's our chisel point. And then we're just going to take this bit of code and put it all in front of everything and we'll go back and fix the numbers momentarily. Um, we haven't talked about formatting much. You want to give yourself enough spacing to know what you're doing. But um, the better you are at formatting, the easier it is to track down what you're looking for. So good convention is after each one of these little curly braces you indent. And so if you didn't want to go and put the tab function in front of everything, you can just hit um, Control or Command I, and that'll indent. And then if you do Command or Shift I or Control Command Shift I, uh, that'll unindent. Uh, same with commenting. So if you want to comment, you can just do Control or Command D, and then to undo it, just the Shift version of Control or Command D. Okay. There we go. Let's see what we've got. All right, so there are all our chisels, and apparently we've left one function doing extra stuff. Okay, so this is the really great thing about your design. You have to ask yourself, well, first off, I don't think I want that to be hexagonal. So you can go up to the code where you copied and pasted it, or you could look and say, uh, I want this to be a circle, so I'm just going to make it 64. Right. And there you go. You have your high-resolution inverted cone instead of the six-sided one. And then you can see over here, our initial pointed chisel um, is taller. And so if we were to print things in this orientation, uh, this would be a problem because these four components would need support, or um, we'd have to print it on the side, and that leads to other issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the code, and where we did the math, we translate it point length.
but the length itself is added to point length. So what we need to do is at length, we need to subtract our point length. So I'm just gonna copy this, bring it over to length, hit minus, paste it in, and there we go. Now everything's the same height. So if we wanted to 3D print this, this would be our build platform here, and all of the parts would print fine. So once you're done, you need to save this, and call this uh, So it's always good to go back and make sure that everything you've done um, works the way you thought.